the question is not, I'm not a parent. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but I just had a question. This is something that I've, I've struggled with a lot. Um, I, I called a bunch of parents. I, I work, I'm the youth director here. In the lab. I, I've been calling a lot of parents to try to convince them to come to this event in particular. And I wanted, you know, it's, it's difficult to navigate that conversation without sounding accusatory or like, Yo, you need help with your parenting. <laughs> um, but but I, I'm uniquely situated to see a lot of issues that, that happen behind the door, the behind the scenes and stuff. How do you achieve buy-in from parents? A lot of whom come from backgrounds that wouldn't be receptive to this mentality of, yeah, I do need to talk to my kids. And I need to not, I'm not a person who's, my job isn't to be in control, but to, to, to develop somebody who can think for themselves and who can believe for themselves. How do you how do you achieve that buy-in from parents? Um, obviously, I mean you can see from from here like we have we have a ton more people in this community, right, than we have in this room, um, uh, and also we have a lot more. One thing I notice is when it comes to things like this, a lot of times mothers will come more than fathers, and I think that's we need fathers to come and take part in this kind of thing, and we need fathers who are uh, emotionally intelligent and and willing to, to buy into this as well. And not, not saying buy in as in it's something false, but yes. but to yes. reconnect with the sunnah, the Prophet in this regard in particular. So how do you achieve that in your community? And how do you suggest we you know, push for that and, and pursue that here? Jazakallah yeah. so. khair, I think that's a great question. And I think, you know, sometimes when, to go back to the question of time, you know, when you feel like you're running around all week long, right? And then you see that the masjid is doing a four hour program or six hour program, however many hours it is. And you're just like, wow, that's a whole Sunday. <laughs> I would say like, for example, something that we do at Cornerstone in our program, some to pull parents and we do a, uh, a football uh, watch and learn um, where on Sundays we will do uh, an evening and it's particularly geared towards the uh, the fathers um, they tend to show up uh, so we do we do the snacks we do the halal wings we do you know all of that um, we do have a, a big screen television um, during every commercial during every time you know the halftime the cheerleaders whatever it is we turn it off and we have conversation um, and we have uh, Dr. Ahmed who is uh, one of our male interventionists leads those um, and it's just during those little segments and it'll just be little bits and what started happening we started this early on we, we had like three fathers I think show up in the beginning um, now alhamdulillah we have almost 30 that come and they, they bring their sons and so it becomes a beautiful like opportunity of bonding. We also do um, something called Fajr Club, where um, we, we gear towards the fathers. We just started with the sisters as well, because the sisters are like, why why, why don't we get this? But with, for the fathers with Fajr Club, it was um, going to, so in New Jersey, alhamdulillah, we have many, many masjid, you know. Um, so going to a different masjid to pray Fajr um, every Saturday morning, and then afterwards breakfast at a different halal breakfast place, because again, we have a lot of halal food too, alhamdulillah. <laughs> so you partner, like, you know, different breakfast. And, you know, what we would do is, like, we fundraise in order to cover the cost. So it's not just food, but it's free food, <laughs> and it's companionship. And, again, we started seeing the, uh, the the fathers and the sons coming out in droves. Um, in the summer, we actually do it at the beach. So every Sunday, we do a Fajr club at the beach where we pray Fajr at the beach. Um, we Everyone kind of brings a dish, and we uh, also do, like, a little halaka. Um, and it's been something that, that draws parents out, but it also draws children. And that's one of the things that we really want to focus on, and I was mentioning this before, we shouldn't keep isolating our children, pushing them into, you know, daycare or childcare. And I know it's difficult, but, you know, starting to develop a culture where it's okay for the little one to come running up to the podium and everyone saying, oh, and pulling it back. And, you know, and as they grow older, they grow with the community. You know, to your question, Abdullah, I mean, I don't know, regarding parenting workshops, again, you know, when I, when I, 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 when I opened with my experience teaching the eight-week series for Taysir last year, it was really interesting because we had like hundreds of folks who signed up, you know, for this, which is excellent, mashallah, it was all kind of through WhatsApp, and then we had probably 50 or 60 regulars, and they were pretty diverse, and we had a lot of brothers on that group, so, um, you know, I don't know, it's kind of hard to kind of account for uh, some, you know, kind of what space parents are in. I mean, I don't know necessarily that they're thinking, okay, here's another lecture. I mean, I, I don't really need to be lectured on how to parent. It might be kind of how it's being presented to them. It might be sort of, um, I don't know. I think there's there's this part, there's this piece of parenting, just to kind of reflect on this. There's this piece of parenting that's very emotional mm -hmm. to where we're kind of, um, it's very hard to have, I think, em enough kind of 
distance or space to actually say, hey, maybe I can do this differently or better. You know, because again, we're going to, at least in my case, you're going to kind of fall back into old patterns. And I find myself often kind of falling back into things that I kind of came up with. And it can be kind of an interesting space to say, well, hey, this is what was really good, mashallah. This is where I just, I just think my parents, they just really nailed this. This was amazing. And this is kind of where, yeah, maybe I can take a different strategy. That might be a little bit difficult, Abdullah, for the parents kind of depending upon where they are, especially if there are certain cultural values there. Cultural values, they think, place a lot of importance on kind of the father as the authority figure. Um, it can be difficult to admit um, not even down the line when the kids are older, but in that moment, that is apparent, hey, I was wrong. That can be really tough, you know, for parents. So that's something to kind of think about, inshallah. 